Yes, this is a really significant area because behind us we have the moraine which crosses the Vale of York formed there in the last glaciation. So if you'd have been here that many thousands of years ago, there would have been ice completely from here up to Scotland and then underneath our feet issuing from the front of that higher area would have been various ice melts, ice wedges and really complicated drift geology emerging in the course of, of quite a short period of time, several centuries. And what we're interested in therefore is the way in which communities which initially were just moving along that higher area from crossing the whole of the Vale of York, how they moved off the moraine and started to uh, claim and then settle within the adjacent landscape. And that would have been a really interesting place to, to, for such settlement and indeed for, for those earlier mobile groups because you've got dry land on the moraine, you've got other sorts of landscapes in the intervening area and then as we travel down to the south it would have been boggy uh, lakeside settlement. So there's a great variety of resources which they'd have been able to access. And so we're interested in the way in which, I guess, the move from mobility to sedentism happened over an extended period of time and the different ways in which that process of engagement performed. So what we, what we have at the moment is some sort of indications of mesolithic activity here in the form of a very small number of flints found distributed in the topsoil and then from the uh, early Neolithic period onwards different forms of, of, of intervention here some of which involve just pit digging others of which in the Bronze Age involve uh, burials in the landscape initially up on the moraine and then laterally on the dip slope in front of us uh, making more localised claims and then eventually in the course of the Iron Age we see uh, a, the first formal boundaries emerging, particularly in the area to the west where there's a very complex network of landscape divisions with uh, roundhouses in enclosures and droveways and fields and so forth which emerged there um, from about 500 BCE through to the eve of the Roman conquest. And there's two things that are striking about that Iron Age settlement really. One is that it involves something more than just um, agricultural activity. There's evidence of artisanal activities taking place there. People are working jet, people are uh, working copper, perhaps even a, a hint of working silver. So it's a cut above the norm for the Iron Age. Not that we know much about the Iron Age in the Vale of York anyway. Uh, but also that the formation of those linear boundaries, the first, first ditches that arrived there, were acknowledged as being significant, not least because one of them, articulating with one of the main water sources, had a decapitation, a, ma a man decapitated and his head buried in the ditch terminal immediately. We're sure it was immediately because his brain um, survived. So he was killed by long drop hanging, his, his head was carefully removed and he was deposited in a symbolic act which serves to show that even at that formative stage people were aware that the making of linear boundaries was of some significance. So that's the story of the Iron Age in, uh, underneath where the university has already um, developed and, and had buildings inserted. Um, as we move further to the east here, this, there's also Iron Age activity, but it takes a different form, spread along the line of the, of the, of the um, contact springs. So where there's water sources, we see a series of enclosures with more straightforward Iron Age houses um, in, in them and that's what's being excavated behind me as we speak actually, a series of quite large roundhouses which were presumably um, a series of successive structures with households um, occupying these enclosed areas. What's important for this particular one that we're in the process of working on is that it seems to continue into the Roman period and so the, although you've got a large fortress created just a few kilometres down the road, um, actually the character of activity in the landscape here doesn't really change. They're receiving some Roman material culture, so in that sense there you could say they're being Romanised, but the way in which the houses that they live in, the enclosures that form part of the landscape that they inhabit, those don't really alter until perhaps a hundred years after the army has been uh, down the road in York.